Hi, I'm going to be doing a quick demo of my clone tiling tool that I've been debugging recently. So let's bring it up here. You'll see a, a few different things pop up. A little control box, a red square that has the cell that's going to be repeated, and sort of a loose boundary for where things are going to be repeated in. In this control box, if you click on it, it brings up a list of all the built-in different tilings. Um, you have the wallpaper groups that are, are pretty well known, I suppose. Um, each of these things kind of gets repeated in a grid, but each of, each cell of that grid gets broken down in various ways. So for instance, this simplest one, if you hit enter or press on that red square, it renders inside your boundary area. You can adjust the boundary area, by the way, to fill in more space, or you can rotate it to have a slightly different arrangement. Uh, if you hit N, it normalizes the, the boundary area, then hit enter a couple of times to get it to render updates again. So if you drag your base cells around, it tries to synchronize with where your cell is placed. So let's kind of put that over here. Uh, I'll say you can, all these source images up here, or these things are just things that are just randomly on the page. But if you click on one of them, you can drag it into your cell area and it's repeated according to how the cells get repeated. So let's actually move that base Let's see, select base cell. Let's move that over here so it's a little bit more out of the way. So now if you move that and then scroll it down, you can see more clearly what's going on. So that, that's the very simplest way to repeat stuff. It's just a nice square grid. If you use the next one, the next tiling pattern, for instance, uh, let's rotate this thing now and see how it maps in there. You can kind of adjust things so that it sort of fits go to one that has even more stuff in it. Rotate it down. So you can kind of see what's what's going on with this. According to that pattern, that's how it's being repeated. Let's scale that thing up so there's less to, to render now. All right, so that's the, let's do a hexagonal one just for kicks. Kind of fun to play around with these things. These lines are not necessarily rendered. If you hit L, uh, you can get rid of them. Or you can do a right click and remove the lines that way. Okay, so now let's go for one of the radial ones. For this one, for instance, let's move that wedge over here, get it a little more out of the way. So now you can use that, do that in just a, the typical radial pattern. The radial ones have these extra little controls over here, so you can control how many times it gets repeated. You'll notice this one, it's not a true overlapping one. There's still a little edge at the bottom there. Anyway, uh, you can also do it, so the next one over is mirrored. So let's scale that down a little, rotate it a bit. So you can do some pretty fancy stuff. Uh, let's see, I also have a spiral one. Let's see, let's move that up inside there, scale it up a bit. All right, that's looking kind of neat. Then this one, the repetitions, the rep is for repetitions. So you can increase the number of repetitions it goes down as it renders. And you can also increase the number of uh, divisions. If you put the lines back, uh, if there's an even number of divisions, then it's it lines up pretty evenly like that. But if it's an odd number, it's staggered as it goes down the hole. All right, so all these things, the, the, uh, the wallpaper groups, and the radial ones, that's just one cell being repeated. Well, what if we want to have more than one cell repeated? For instance, any of these uniform colorings, they're called, these have multiple cells that you can tinker with. Let's see, let's, this one's pretty big, so let's move it down. So now you have not just the a red cell, but there's a purple one and a blue one. So now if you, if you move the object around inside of there, it'll map to different cells and it'll sort of update. So now it's all, all in the squares, and now it's in one set of the octagons. Move over here, it's in the other set of the octagons. 
So now we can put images down here. Let's put the images to fill the square. On my to-do list, this automatically snapped to the, the cell boundaries, but so many things to do. And you can put a put one of these other ones in the, the bigger one. And it's not just one image, you can kind of stack things up too. So down here, if you put that in the cell as well. Actually, let's take that one away, take that one away, put this down here, and then put the image on top of it. All right, so that's basically what's going on with this cloning tool. Um, if you go back to the object tool, uh, and for instance, select the er original base object, you can then edit the shape and it updates automatically. It's also structured in groups so that if, for instance, you export to SVG, if you go to Inkscape, you can modify these things. Uh, also, you might have to click several times to get to down inside the group, but once you're inside, eventually, then when you update things down in here, then it'll update automatically in Inkscape. And these are just clones, so it's like groups of clones, and the clones go to the original objects. So like in here, if you want to update the paths in here, you have to click on the, the original things up here, and then you can modify those, and everything all updates all in there. And there you have it. Thanks for watching.